Today we are going to be talking about the Bandai Movie Monster Series Shin Kamen Rider Coat Version. We will be receiving the rest of the first wave, presumably, of Shin Kamen Rider figures from the Movie Monster Series closer to the movie's release date in Japan. No word if we're gonna get that over here. But anyway, first we gotta get a good old look at this here Shin Kamen Rider tag, and I love this as the tag. This piece of concept art created such hype in my tiny, tiny little brain. I mean, the scarf, the coat, the glowingness of the belt over here, it's just so cool. I just hate that it's got a crease. <laughs> Any hoodle caboodle, open the tag up. This is what you'll get on the inside. And on the back of the tag, you'll get a little bit of this. And now we seal the tag in a protective plastic casing and talk about the figure. Now, I am aware that Bandai made vinyl Kamen Rider figures before, but back in the day, I believe the antennae were actually separate pieces that you applied to the figure. Actually, that's a bit of a boo-boo on my part. A lot of the older vinyl Kamen Rider figures, their antennae were part of the sculpt of the helmet and everything, just like this guy's is. What I was initially thinking of was the Bandai Spirit of Soft Vinyl line, where the antennae were just hanging in a plastic little baggie attached to the hanger in the tag. That's my bad, I apologize. Here, they're kind of just part of the whole friggin' thing. No assembly required. Which is indeed quite nice, considering how hard it is to find Kamen Rider figures from back in the day with their antennas intact in one piece or even included. Still a relevant comment. Now before I gush over this paint and detail, let's take a look at the articulation because it's just going to be in the arms. Yes, just the arms, not the waist like I assumed. And now that I have the figure in hand, doing a waist swivel on this guy probably would have been a terrible idea. There would have been common Rider legs all over the floors of toy stores of Japan. Any hoodles, I'll give articulation a solid star. Now we gush. Yeah. And now that dramatic pull out of frame is just going to be completely redone because I have to set it down to talk about paint in detail anyway, so I'm excited today, can you tell? This guy actually has a lot more paint and detail than I was originally expecting. We've got the pink eyes, we've got this off green for the chest and the mouth over here, the redness of the scarf, the belt with a little black ring around it, green fists and boots over here. And I want you all to wait with bated breath because we're going to turn the figure around and holy God, there's paint on the back of his helmet. Yet another thing I was absolutely not expecting, especially accompanied with a lot more detail as well. Yeah, paint's gonna get a solid star. Now let's take an even closer look at the detail. But before I go all Kamehame detail ha all over you, that sounded dirty. I'm already very impressed with how this figure looks. And yes, granted, there is a lot more going on with this design than the standard Godzilla figure, but it really makes me wonder. Toei, Tadakawa Daie, are they just paying more for like, you know, accuracy or something? Or is Toho not paying as much? Or is it just simple that Toei and Tadakawa Daie just care more about how their products look than Toho do? I don't know, man. Questions. First up, this helmet. There is so many tiny little intricate details going on on this helmet. In between the eyes, below the eyes, on the mouth, there is, oh my god, so much. Now we all know Bandai are the detail kings, especially with their more low budget figures, but dude, I gotta give them a lot of credit here. This looks fantastic. And yeah, the eye paint might be a bit on the smudgy and nicked side on my copy. But that still doesn't take away from the amazing detail on this dude helmet. The antennae might be superbly simple, but they look really good. Turning the figure to the side, you can see we have more detail on the side of the helmet over here. That is just lovely, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm gonna end up being a pretty big fan of these figures if they're all going to end up looking this good. Just look at the detail on the side of the mouth! <laughs> on the back of the helmet, we're gonna get a lot more detail, surprisingly highlighted by paint, as stated before. And then we got my guy's hairdo sticking out on the back over here, and while not supremely detailed, it does look like hair. And honestly, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Now to talk about the coat, I mean, we've got a lot more going on here than I initially expected. We've got straps, we've got stripes, we've got straps and buckles along the wrist, we've got wrinkles and pockets and even a collar going on with this thing. And of course, it's present on the side and on the back of the figure as well. This might be very, very simple wavy details going on here, but I do very much appreciate it. Even got the little tie hanging down over here. And it looks like it continues over here, but it's tucked behind this part of the coat. I 
really, really like that. <laughs> now, in taking a look at the bits of armor that are poking through, we've got a lot of lovely line work going on. Very, very nice. Very much the same as what we got on the helmet. We're going to see a knot in the scarf over here as it is wrapped around Kamen Rider's neck. And then moving a little bit further down, we get a hint look at the belt over here. Not sure if it's um, official name? I'm not all that well versed in Kamen Rider. The most experience I have with a single series of Kamen Rider is the Masked Rider, the dub from Saban. And that is what it is. But the detail is superb. It is very, very nice. And I was a little worried this was going to look kind of on the bad side just because the scarf is kind of flowing down over it. But it really doesn't look all that bad at all. And that detail is beautifully communicated. On Kamen Rider's fists over here, we're going to get some very, very nice detail. We're going to get some minor wrinklaging towards the wrists. And as you can see on the opposite side, we're going to get a bunch of fingers and they're properly detailed. Of course, we're going to get the same amount of stuff on the opposite side over here and these hands just look great moving down to the pants we've got wrinkles especially towards the knees and then we take a look at the common rider boots i'm not sure if the boots are supposed to be all green or if there's going to be some added black on there in the movie and other figures but they do look nice the detail as per bandai usual communicates it very very nicely and then we're just gonna get some random stuff on the bottom of the feet i think i pretty much covered everything that i possibly can on this guy. He features quite a lot to look at, and oh my god, there's buttons. There's buttonholes. What the f the Bandai? And the buttonholes go- Oh my god, I completely gapped that. Yeah, I think you can all tell this guy is going to get a solid star in terms of detail, and did I give articulation a solid star? I'm pretty sure I did. Three solid stars for Shin Kamen Rider coat version. I imagine this isn't the most exciting thing to a lot of you out there, but this thing's pretty freaking awesome. Got more paint on them than the last major Godzilla release did. What a way to gather a good first impression. Good amount of paint, a lot of detail, very minimal in terms of articulation, but I really wasn't expecting too much anyway. And like I said at the beginning of the video, had that waist swivel been there, I feel like, uh, yeah, it just wouldn't have turned out well. As if I wasn't already excited for Shin Kamen Rider enough, I'm even more excited now because these vinyl figures are just adding to the hype. I'm excited to see the movie, I'm excited to see even more figures, and I really need to find an SH Figuarts pre-order of Shin Kamen Rider. God damn it. This thing looks awesome and i can't wait to see how the other figures turn out as well beyond all that we know is coming out on top of it i'm curious to see how the movie monster series are going to handle the villains i wonder if we're going to get a vinyl bike for shit and common rider that would be really really cool hype is definitely in the air and this is a great way to get started I imagine many people will probably be sitting the vinyl figures out in favor of that SH Figuarts figure, and how can you not? He comes with a jacket and it's got bendy wire in it, it's posable. Seriously, if anybody's got a link, please hook it up. Not half bad a way to start off a new week, huh? Brand new movie monster series figure and... Is Kamen Rider technically a monster? I mean, I've seen some grotesque stuff involving Kamen Rider, but I don't know if that's going to be afflicting this guy at all. I'm thinking too hard about it. I have been Shinra Jira. I do so hope you enjoyed this review. And I hope you're ready for more, because my limited movie monster series Godzilla 1984 is currently on its way. And then maybe by the end of the week, we can get to those Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio Migo figures. We'll see. Maybe I'll be able to sneak that in on Wednesday. But alas, social media, Patreon, other stuff going on over here. Yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you all next time. Peace. Kind of hit my camera over here, so... Thank <laughs> you.